everyone, I'm Dr. Jordan Taylor, the Undergraduate Exercise Science Program Director and Associate Teaching Professor at the University of Kansas. Athletes suffer more strains to the hamstrings than any other thigh muscle. Hamstring strains are painful injuries that can sideline an athlete for several weeks or months because injuries to this muscle group significantly impair one's ability to run, jump, and even walk. As a former professional arena and indoor football player, I struggled with and was frustrated by reoccurring hamstring injuries at many different times in my career. It wasn't until I changed some of my approaches to training that I stopped having issues with hamstring injuries. In this fitness facts video, I will first explain the location and function of the hamstring muscles. Then I will define what a hamstring strain is, talk about the signs and symptoms of a hamstring strain, cover how an injury is graded, and discuss what causes a strain. Furthermore, I will provide estimates of how long it takes to heal from hamstring strains and describe the various treatment approaches that are used to help you recover quicker and return to play fast. Finally, I will discuss training strategies you can use to bulletproof your hamstrings and prevent hamstring strains from occurring in the first place. The hamstring muscle group consists of the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. These three muscles are located in the posterior compartment on the back of the thigh, where they cross over both the hip and the knee. They originate or begin at just below the buttocks, arising from the ischium, which is the bone to which they are attached. The hamstrings also connect distally by means of their tendons onto the upper parts of the lower leg bones, the tibia and the fibula. When undergoing a concentric muscle shortening contraction, the hamstrings function to extend the hip, which causes the thigh bone, or femur, to move backwards. This action is important for propelling the body forward when sprinting. The hamstrings also cause the knee to bend or flex when concentrically contracting. The hamstrings have important functions when the muscles are undergoing a lengthening eccentric contraction as well. When eccentrically contracting during sprinting, a primary role of the hamstrings is to store elastic energy in the swing phase and then release that energy when the foot makes contact with the ground. Eccentric hamstring contractions also help control the landing of the foot under the pelvis when running. The hamstrings also affect pelvic tilt and rotation, sacral rotation, and rotation of the hip. Surprisingly, these large muscles are not very active with normal walking or standing. However, due to the muscle actions I previously described, they are obviously extremely important in power activities such as sprinting, jumping, skipping, and climbing. Sedentary individuals often have quite weak or deconditioned hamstrings, whereas athletes and very physically active individuals depend on healthy, strong, and well-conditioned hamstrings for optimal performance. A hamstring strain, also known as a pulled hamstring, is caused by a rapid forceful contraction or a violent stretch of the hamstring muscle group, which causes high mechanical stress leading to, over, to the overstretching or tearing of muscle fibers. Hamstring strains most commonly occur in athletes participating in sports requiring sprinting, such as track and field, football, soccer, and basketball. Hamstring injuries are less common in those training for general fitness or physique development. In 2005, a study was published by Thielen and colleagues in the journal Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. The purpose of the study was to analyze hamstring muscle kinematics during sprinting and to better understand injury mechanisms and differences in injury rates between the hamstring muscles. Results from this study indicated that the biceps femoris is the most likely of the three hamstring muscles to be injured. Other studies agree and show a relatively higher rate of injury to the biceps femoris as compared to the semimembranosus and semitendinosus. Hamstring strains can occur within the muscle belly or near where they attach to bone under the buttocks or closer to the back of the knee. The extent of injury can vary from the pulling apart of a few muscle fibers to a complete rupture. A grade one hamstring strain is a mild injury accompanied by some muscle soreness with movement and point tenderness. Grade one strains result in primarily overstretching with fewer than 20% of the fibers being torn. A grade two strain is more severe and represents a partial tearing of up to 70% of the fibers. 
Grade two injuries are accompanied by severe pain and loss of function during hip extension and or knee flexion. A grade three hamstring injury constitutes a complete rupture with more than 70% of the fibers being torn. And in rare cases, a grade three injury may result in the muscle separating from the bone it is attached to. Major disability and loss of function results from grade three injuries. When a hamstring injury occurs, pain is often felt immediately, and sometimes a popping sound can be heard or a tearing sensation felt with grade two and three strains. Loss of function resulting from hamstring strains varies according to the degree of trauma. Usually, an athlete will not be able to continue playing immediately after injury, and they may even have difficulty walking and standing. The back of the thigh will feel tight and tender. With more severe injuries, a palpable defect may be felt in the muscle and discoloration and bruising may be observed on the back of the leg one or two days after injury. Of all muscle injuries, hamstring strains have one of the highest reoccurrence rates. Strains tend to reoccur as a result of inelastic fibrous scar tissue that sometimes forms during the healing process. The higher the incidence of strains at a particular hamstring muscle site, the greater the amount of scar tissue formed, which increases the likelihood of injuring the muscle again in the future. There are many reasons why hamstring strains may occur. Risk factors that have been associated with hamstring injury include de decreased quadriceps flexibility, weak gluteal muscles, increased hip flexor tightness, weak abdominal musculature, older age, increased body weight, overstriding during sprint acceleration, a low hamstring to quadriceps strength ratio, muscle fatigue, leg length discrepancies, hamstring tightness, though it is unclear whether this is a cause or consequence of injury, decreased tendon compliance, inadequate warm-up prior to competition, and previous injury, which is consistently one of the highest predictors of future injury risk. The period of maximal eccentric contraction in the running cycle, when the muscle is both lengthening and contracting at the same time, seems to carry a higher risk for hamstring muscle injury. Results of a 2012 study titled The Dynamic Load on Hamstring Muscles During Sprinting indicated that the hamstrings endure the greatest loading during the initial stance phase and late swing phase of the sprint cycle. It is during these two phases that the hamstrings are most susceptible to strain injury. Biomechanical analysis of hamstring function during running has consistently shown that the maximal lengthening of the hamstring occurs at the end of the swing phase of gait, just prior to foot contact when the hip is flexed and the knee flexion moment is reducing. During sprinting, which involves more hip flexion than jogging, this stretch is offset by relatively less knee extension. EMG analysis confirms that the maximal hamstring contraction also correlates to this portion of the running phase, as the hamstrings are eccentrically contracting or lengthening and applying a breaking force to the quadriceps and hip flexors. A low hamstring to quadriceps strength ratio will increase the extension moment through the knee, potentially stretching the eccentrically contracting hamstring beyond its elastic capabilities. Therefore, eccentric strengthening of the hamstring is very important for preventing hamstring strain injuries. I will discuss improving eccentric strength in the hamstrings in more detail later in this video. The combination of tight musculature and a longer running stride may also predispose to injury. Athletes who bend forward at the hips to accelerate while running tilt their pelvis anteriorly and increase tension on the hamstrings. Over lengthening of the long head of the biceps femoris has been documented as the cause of acute hamstring strain in injuries captured on video analysis. Tightness of the iliopsoas, which is a hip flexor, is directly responsible for an anterior pelvic tilt that places the hamstrings at a mechanical disadvantage by increasing the tension on the hamstrings when the end of the swing phase is reached. Weakness of the abdominal muscles and gluteus maximus also creates an excessive anterior pelvic tilt, placing the hamstrings at a mechanical disadvantage that can lead to overuse and strain injury. Moving on now to recovery from injury. If you sustain a hamstring strain, how long does it take to fully recover from the injury and return to unrestricted physical activity or sports? 
The time it takes to fully recover from a hamstring strain depends on the severity of injury. Mild to moderate grade one or two hamstring strains can heal within three to eight weeks with diligent treatment. For a grade three hamstring injury, recovery may be as long as three months or more, and surgery may be required in rare cases when the hamstring is completely detached from bone and needs to be reconnected. Rehabilitation for a proximal hamstring reattachment near the hip typically takes at least six months due to the severity of the injury. Distal hamstring reattachments near the knee require approximately three months of rehabilitation before returning to athletic activities. Your doctor will tell you when it is safe to return to sports. What treatments are used to assist with healing and promote recovery from hamstring muscle strains? Initially after injury, it is important to rest the injured muscle. Avoid stretching immediately after an injury during the acute inflammatory phase. An overstretching of the muscle is most likely why you sustain the strain in the first place. So let the muscle rest and just ice it immediately after injury. Activity should be reduced until soreness has been completely alleviated and return to full sports participation should not be allowed until complete function and full strength of the injured hamstring muscle is restored. Early treatment goals focus on minimizing intramuscular bleeding and controlling the inflammatory response. Applying ice for 20 minutes several times per day and using compression wraps are both helpful in the acute phase of healing, which typically lasts for 24 to 72 hours. Evidence for using anti-inflammatory drugs during the acute injury phase is mixed. Anti-inflammatory medication such as ibuprofen is often used during the first 24 to 72 hours after injury to try to reduce inflammation. The use of these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs has been shown in animal models to be detrimental to healing tissue when used for long periods of time. But for shorter periods, they can help to minimize inflammatory mediated damage to healthy tissue that is peripheral to the injury. Anti-inflammatories also reduce tissue soreness and probably allow earlier progression from total rest to early rehabilitation. However, other evidence suggests that the inflammatory response to injury is actually a necessary phase of soft tissue healing and its inhibition with anti-inflammatory drugs can significantly impair muscle protein synthesis and delay muscle regeneration and recovery after injury. So personally, I would try to avoid using anti-inflammatory drugs after injury. After the acute inflammatory phase subsides, a treatment regimen of contrast baths alternating between hot and cold water, active range of motion, ultrasound, and isometric exercise may be of benefit. In the later stages of healing, which can range from a couple weeks to several months, depending on the injury severity, gentle stretching, stationary cycling, jogging, and isokinetic and isotonic strengthening exercises may be used. The reintroduction of sport-specific movement patterns and straight-ahead sprinting occur at the end of rehabilitation before full return to sports participation. The primary goals of rehabilitation include restoration of pre-injury muscle strength and flexibility. Achieving these goals during rehab is important since hamstring flexibility and strength tend to decrease after a hamstring strain in part due to an increase in intramuscular scar tissue formation. Restoration of muscle length reduces eccentric loads that are imposed at peak joint torque once activity is resumed. Stretching the hamstring with the pelvis maintained in an anterior pelvic tilt has been shown to be more effective for muscle lengthening than standard hamstring stretches. Muscle strengthening after injury should first emphasize isometric and concentric strengthening, followed by an emphasis on eccentric strengthening. Eccentric strength exercises can assist standard stretching in reestablishing muscle length after injury. Abdominal and glute strengthening is also important to help maintain the pelvis in a position that allows the hamstrings to function more optimally. How can you prevent hamstring strains from happening in the first place? Well, by reducing the risk factors for injury that I discussed earlier. To reduce your risk of sustaining a hamstring strain, it is important that you, number one, maintain adequate flexibility. Focus stretching on your quadriceps and hip flexors, such as the iliopsoas, to reduce anterior pelvic tilt 
and tension on the hamstrings at the end of the swing phase of the sprint cycle. Maintaining good hamstring flexibility is important too, although many studies have shown prophylactic stretching does not influence the rate of hamstring injury, but stretching during rehabilitation after an injury may be more helpful. Contrary to popular belief, having tight hamstrings is not the main cause of hamstring strains. In fact, hamstring stiffness has been shown to be an attribute of speed and not a mechanism causing injury. You still need some amount of flexibility in your hamstrings though, but too much flexibility is just as bad as not having enough. Number two, strengthen the abdominal musculature. The biarticular nature of the hamstring muscle as well as its wide array of muscle attachments requires attention beyond the hamstring itself. Abdominal and core muscle strengthening keeps the pelvis in an optimal position for hamstring function and increases the overall stability of the pelvic platform. Number three, don't get old. Seriously, don't. <laughs> the hamstrings can become shorter and less elastic with increased age and reduced physical activity levels. And this combination impairs flexibility, range of motion, and strength. Number four, run and sprint with proper mechanics. Do not overstride. Overstriding places significant stretch on the hamstrings when they are contracting eccentrically during the late swing phase of the sprint cycle. Not only does overstriding increase your risk of hamstring strain, it also causes you to run more slowly as the foot of the overstriding limb tends to contact the ground in front of the pelvis, acting as a brake and decelerating the body. Number five, increase your hamstring to quadriceps strength ratio. A healthy concentric hamstring to quadriceps muscle strength range of 50 to 80% is widely accepted. For example, if you can perform a seated leg extension of 100 pounds using the quadriceps muscles, then you should be able to leg curl between at least 50 to 80 pounds. Athletes should aim for the concentric hamstring strength being closer to 80% of the concentric quadriceps strength when comparing strength differences between the two muscle groups. Even more important is the ratio of eccentric hamstring strength to concentric quadriceps strength. Remember that most hamstring injuries occur when the muscles are performing an eccentric lengthening contraction during the late swing phase or during the initial stance phase of the sprint cycle. In 2018, a paper was published in the Orthopedics and Sports Medicine open access journal titled Functional Hamstring to Quadriceps Strength Ratio and Hamstring Injury of Soccer Players, a Qualitative Analysis. The importance of eccentric hamstring strength relative to concentric quadriceps strength was reviewed in this paper. The authors stated a more functional assessment of strength is to express the hamstring to quadriceps ratio, strength ratio, for terms of hamstring eccentric strength to quadriceps concentric strength. With this in mind, the eccentric torque produced by the hamstrings would need to match the concentric torque of the quadriceps to prevent possible injury. That is, a functional hamstring to quadriceps strength ratio of one to one. Or more simply put, if your quadriceps are capable of concentrically contracting to lift a 100 pound load during a leg extension, then your hamstrings should have the eccentric strength to maintain tension while lengthening and slowly lowering an equal load of 100 pounds back to the starting position of a leg curl. The Nordic curl is a great exercise for improving eccentric hamstring, hamstring strength and I highly recommend all athletes do this exercise. A 2019 systematic review and meta-analysis published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine by Van Dyke and colleagues found that hamstring injuries are reduced by 51% when athletes perform the Nordic curl as part of an injury prevention program. Not only are strong hamstrings less prone to injury, but an athlete with adequate hamstring strength will be less likely to sustain knee injuries such as a torn anterior cruciate ligament, also no known as a torn ACL. It's also important to strengthen your gluteus maximus. Have you ever seen an elite sprinter with a flat butt? The answer is no. So build up strength and muscle mass in your booty. Athletes should generate the majority of their hip extension power from the glutes for sprinting and other explosive hip extension movements. 
The hamstrings are designed to assist the gluteus maximus in hip extension during sprinting. However, if the glutes are weak, then the hamstrings have to pick up the slack. Weak glutes make the hamstrings work overtime to extend the hip. The hamstrings are not designed to be the primary hip extensors. They are synergists in hip extension working together with the gluteus maximus. Perform exercises that train the glutes to fire first at the initiation of hip extension so they can do the majority of the work. It's also important to rest if your hamstring muscles are fatigued or extremely sore. Fatigued and sore muscles are more prone to injury. Perform a 10 to 15 minute warm up prior to engaging in strenu strenuous physical exercise. The purpose of performing light exercises during a warm up is to increase core and intramuscular temperature. Increases in temperature improve range of motion by enhancing the extensibility of tissues around joints. I hope you gained some knowledge about hamstring strains and enjoyed this edition of Fitness Facts. In a subsequent video release, I will demonstrate various exercises that you can incorporate into your training program to prevent hamstring strains from occurring. Be on the lookout for that video and thanks for watching.